Hello and welcome to the show. This Mercedes 300 SLR is my B-Class car of choice when it comes to Forza 6. It is a really rather quick car. However, all of that performance does come at a price. A really, really rather high price. 1.9 million credits to be precise. And while it is a fantastic car, that is an awful, awful lot of money for a B-Class racing vehicle, and not everybody's necessarily going to be able to afford that. So, this got me thinking, could I build a competitive B-Class car for less than 50,000 credits? Now, that budget gives me a decent amount to go looking for a vehicle. Now, you do have to be careful when selecting a car for this. If you buy a car that's too low a PI, you may well end up having to spend far too much money to get it up to B-Class, especially if you start talking about engine swaps. They're going to get very expensive very quickly. So I wanted a car that was around the top of D-Class, lowish C-Class, and I ended up settling on this BMW M5. For just 22,000 credits, it is very, very good value for money. It gave me 28,000 to spend on the upgrades. The thing that caught my attention most about the M5, though, was the engine. 342 horsepower, 301 foot-pounds of torque. Now, they're pretty good figures for a B-Class vehicle, and this kind of meant to me that I, I knew I didn't have to spend very much upgrading the engine. I didn't have to worry about engine swaps, didn't have to really worry about that many engine parts. I could focus on, uh, on the handling of the vehicle. So, with my car selected, it was off to the upgrade shop. Now, I was going to build this car as an overall vehicle. I wasn't going to build it specifically for any particular track. So, I had to be careful. I didn't, couldn't go too power hungry, otherwise it would be awful at the tighter circuits. And, of course, if you go too grip, you know, you go for too much of a grip build, you will struggle on any tracks with long straights. The first thing, though, that I was going to do with the vehicle weight reduction. From standard £3,772 is quite a lot of weight, but equally I knew that weight reduction is a great value for money upgrade. For just about 2,300 credits, I think it is, you can get race weight reduction. That takes out a huge amount of weight, it gets the car down to just over £3,000. So huge performance increase for very little in the way of money. Great place to start with the car. Next thing was the tyres on the vehicle. Now, I wanted to have this as an overall build. So, uh, you know, I wanted some decent grip in the car. I'm going to go for maximum tyre widths, of course, especially with this car. We get 305s on the rear, 285s on the front. They're decent sized tyres on this thing. Uh, about 6,500 credits for both of the other uh, tyre widths. Now, if I was building a straight line speed car, I'd probably run it on standard tyres. But seeing as I wanted to go around all circuits, I opted for the sports tyres. That's 5,000 credits. Didn't really want to go for the race tyres, especially not in B-Class. It's 10,000 credits for them. That's a fifth of the budget just, just on the tyres alone. I know tyres are very, very important. But, uh, yeah, in, in B-Class, I didn't really see the needs to go for the race tyres. They increase the PI by so much, you often can't get very much more in the way of parts. I don't think I could have got race weight reduction these tyre widths and the race tyres on the car anyway. Uh, within the PI, I, I, I didn't, didn't see the, the necessity for them. And this combination of the tyre widths and the sport tyres gives the BMW plenty of grip. It's a really very, very nice driving car. Other parts included race suspension and race brakes. Engine, I did do a little bit to the engine. I put on the first stage of the exhaust and first stage of the air filter. I would have gone for, for more, but I couldn't couldn't, uh, couldn't keep it in B-Class. Uh, I did this to save, again, saving weight. I got the car down to £2,991 with them upgrades. So weight is now down at a more, a more sensible level. Parts that I didn't include, didn't go for aero parts. The total cost of this car was just under 45,000 credits, which is pretty damn good going. Didn't include aero parts for a couple of reasons, uh, they're about two grand each. Uh, and while I would just about have the budget for them, I opted not to. Because, well, yes, they give you more downforce, give you good grip for these tighter circuits. It also increases drag, and on the longer circuits, seeing as I didn't have a huge amount of power, I figured taking the uh, taking the, the air or not having the aero parts on the car would be good for straight line speed. There was enough grip as it was. The balance was good to uh, to start with. So, with the car ready to go, I set about testing it around three different circuits, just going hot lapping around the Lime Rock circuit, the Yas Marina North circuit that we see here, and the Sonoma NASCAR circuit. Now, the Lime Rock, I was using the alternate layouts, as you saw before, uh, very much a handling circuit, that track. Well, yes, there are a couple of longer straights, you know, it's a very, very technical circuit. This Yas Marina North circuit, much more of a power track, you know, a couple of really very, very long straights, you want decent straight line speed around here. And the Sonoma NASCAR circuit is a very much a medium speed track track. Now, this car, as I said, you know, it's, it's an overall vehicle. It's not specifically built for any kind of track. It's not a particularly specialised car. Uh, 
you know, and you also got to consider I'm not the greatest tuner. I put in a very, very little bit of tuning work on the car, and while I'm a decent driver, I'm certainly not the best out there. Around all of these three tracks, it went within three seconds of the fastest time. On, on the most part, it was a little bit more down at, uh, at Yaz. It's not quite got the straight line, got the straight line speed around here. With the engine parts, we've got up to 361 horsepower, 318 foot-pounds of torque. But I suspect you could probably get 500 plus in this in B class if you'd opted for for lesser grade tyres and so on, if you specifically built it for this kind of a track, basically. Uh, so yeah, it did struggle a little bit more uh, around Yaz, but uh, at Lime Rock and Sonoma, it was within about three seconds of the fastest times. Uh, Sonoma got it into 151st on the leaderboard, Lime Rock is in the top 500. Uh, most of the tracks, I did test a few others, just a couple of laps, it would get in the top 500 without too many problems, uh, really. And this was, all of these tracks were only with about eight or nine laps. So, yeah, better tuning, better driving, and, and so on. I have no doubt this is a seriously quick car. With the, uh, the time trials out of the way, it was to the crucible of fire that is the uh, online public lobbies. Now, trying to judge a car in these is very, very difficult because you're inevitably going to get crashed out at the first corner quite a lot. So this is more to see how it would compare in you know racing situations where you do find good cars to uh, to go racing with. Didn't really matter about your overall position, but uh, yeah, how it would fare in, in battles and in overtaking with just random cars. You see I was racing against here a Supra, an Integra, and a Bel Air. The Supra, uh, better handling car probably running the race tires but was no match for the straight line speed of the bmw and the thing is this this m5 was good enough through the corners that he couldn't really do anything about it the integra again got a little bit too much wheel spin out of turn two there easily fired the car up the inside and there's more than enough control in the bmw to get the pass done cleanly same with the bel air very very quick in a straight line this bel air but doesn't have the grip through the corners i will get the bmw up the inside and get the position but importantly it was quick enough in the straights as well so that the bel air didn't really have a chance to get it back. It never had time to get back at me because I was still still decent straight line speed. The Integra actually makes the most of it. an opportunity there. Gets himself up the uh, the inside. So at this Brands Hatch Indy circuit, the M5 was really, really rather, rather quick. Next, Daytona. I figured the M5 may struggle a little bit here. It, it, it didn't do so well at uh, Yaz Marina. It did okay, but uh, I knew the straight line speed wasn't the, uh, this car's strong point. And especially if people had very, very quick cars. I know the 2002 turbos can be ludicrously fast in B-Class. If you can keep control of them, though. That is the uh, the catch with them vehicles. <laughs> Unfortunately, this one was already rally-crossing his way across the grass there. Um, I started towards the front of this grid. I was trying to, uh, to make the most of it. A Camaro was having a bit of a sniff up, up the inside, but uh, I had enough grip to, you know, keep it around the outside and then good acceleration out of the turn. Did have to be aware the back end was a little bit on the wiggly side from the BMW. It wasn't terrible, but a little bit more than I would perhaps personally like, but yeah, it was certainly quite manageable around the outside of a Mercedes through the next quarter. And again, we have more than enough handling to make that move stick. And then we get the acceleration to get away from, from the cars which is all very, very important. As an overall, as a balanced car, I was really very, very impressed with this particular vehicle. Camaro <laughs> runs a little bit too wide through that part, gets a bit of a bump from a, from a Mitsubishi. Now, unfortunately, all of these, these mods play races do tend to only be, I think it's only three laps around here. So while I did catch up to the back of the leader here with another BMW, uh, I could have done with another lap to try and find a way, to find a way past, really. We did have a little bit of a, a little bit of a problem, though. While uh, my car was better through the corners, his car was a little bit better on the straights. We were being caught by a Shelby Mustang that was really very fast on the straights, and this is perhaps the slight problem with this M5. As an overall car, fantastic. However, when you go to a track, if you come up against specialised tracks, so at Daytona you come up against straight-line speed cars like this Shelby, or you go to you know the handling circuits and specialised handling cars, Beetles, Civics, uh, Mitsubishi Evo 8s were quite popular as well, with leaderboard tunes on them, you're not going to stand a chance. You're just simply not going to uh, to be able to compete with them. Admittedly, you take this Mustang around a handling circuit, it's going to do awful, and vice versa with the handling cars and so on. But um, yeah, against the specialised vehicles, it's not is not really not really fast enough to compete with them but against the general cars you know i'd be very happy to take this uh, and race in a versus the community it's definitely very very competitive in in b class when i was running i ran a whole number of races it was on the most part getting in the top three of fastest laps where it come position wise did largely depend on how many morons you came up against but um the fastest lap wise it was generally right towards the top. The odd specialised car would go a fair bit quicker than it, but uh, for the general vehicles, for the people that weren't changing car for every single track, 
it was one of the fastest. And I was really, really pleased to see that. That is a fantastic last lap battle going on. All with uh, this Toyota Celica. The Toyota, a little bit better through the turns. My car, though, quicker in a straight line. And I was trying to make the most of it. And, you know, as, as I said before, this thing, you know, with decent straight line speed, it could it could get past, you know, whenever there was a straight, it could find a way to, to get past vehicles. But it would hold its own through the corners very, very well. You know, it could, it could keep up with a lot of the, the real handling cars. Uh, which, yeah, I was I was really pleased. I was really pleased with this car. Salika runs a little bit wide. He leaves a gap, which I'm going to uh, very much pounce on, get myself up the inside. And then, of course, I've got the straight line speed down this little bit of a back straight, but I am stuck on the outside. Again, Salika just running in that little bit too deep, trying to uh, make sure he can keep ahead. Leaves me a nice gap on the inside again. We'll do the cutback, and we'll outdrag him on the way up towards this top of the hill. Toyota not quite fancying the around the outside. He keeps his car there just in case, but it can't quite get it done. Now, as I said at Daytona, the back end of the BMW could get a little wiggly from time to time. I slightly overdid it coming into the corkscrew. Can't quite get it stopped. Fortunately for me, neither can the Toyota. We both pushed it a little too hard. I get a very big slide on the way down. Uh, both pushed it a little bit too hard. We managed to uh, to get away with it, though, up, uh, up at that section. And again, through these corners, I was holding my own in the BMW and then could get out of them faster and get a little further down the uh, straight. The brakes were pretty good on the BMW. This particular round, I was a little cowardly being on the final lap I really didn't want to bulls anything up so I was a little cowardly under braking it gave the Toyota an opportunity to go around the outside he gets the braking spot on however we're going to go have a drag race and uh, the Toyota is no match for my M5 as I would beat him across the line this this car was yeah really really rather really rather solid I set out to find if I could build uh, a B-class car a competitive and that's the important thing a competitive B-class car for less than 50,000 credits, and I did. For, for 45,000 credits, I got this, uh, this M5. I really, really do quite like it. Yes, against the leaderboard, you know, the leaderboard tune cars, the cars specialized for each circuit, it's not going to, it's not going to beat them. And, you know, never really expected it to be able to keep up with uh, with them, because it is built to be, to be used at every single track. But, uh, yeah, it did. It did really, really hold its own in the multiplayer in the multiplayer lobbies. On most of the tracks, I went and did rivals around it. We're getting the top 500s without too much without too much trouble, and that's with my lack of knowledge of tuning. So, yeah, this is a really, really solid all-round vehicle. This one for very little in the way of money. It's not quite as quick as my 300 SLR. It's it's a little bit down on that, but it's not by very much at all. I, I was really surprised. I, I'd hoped to build a decent car. I didn't think I would quite get as fast a car as, as this one. As, yeah, it, it really did really did hold its own in whichever situation, whichever track it found itself running around. I ran it in the wet. It went quick there. It's, uh, yeah, a really, really rather good vehicle. Anyway, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, uh, goodbye. Thank you.